Hello, hello, everybody. Hello, Russ. Hey, Dwayne. How's it going? Good to see you. I'm good. How about you? Good to see you. Staying busy. All right. Putting the itinerary here in the chat, everybody. Give me a sec. All righty. So today we're going to go over some of the, we're going to review some of the new stuff from last week and then go over how to create an offer. We've been getting a lot of questions on that. And then as always, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to put it in the chat and we'll get to it in the Q&A section. Awesome. All right. Thanks everyone again for joining. I'm going to go ahead and get started and share my screen. A lot of the questions from the recent support tickets and people in the discord and if you haven't joined our discord please feel free to join our public discord it's free and it's available for everybody and once you're a paying subscriber there's uh, private chats as well a lot of questions have been related to the SaaS configurator and how to create subscription packages and what all that means. So we're just going to go through a quick little review about that, and then we can go over any other questions that people might have. So just to start off, once you add your custom domain and everything, you'll be prompted to use your white labeled version of Stammer. And this is important because most of everything related to creating different subscription packages is going to be related to the white label version because everything is connected to your connected Stripe account. So when you have your connected Stripe account and your custom white label domain. We are then able to get custom package links, which are then white labeled uh, for your agency. So creating subscription packages will only work after you have set up your white labeling and after you have connected your Stripe account. Once you do those two things, you have the ability to create different subscription packages. And right now we have the ability to set three different individual subscription packages. And each of those individual subscription packages can have multiple different billing cycles or billing options, monthly, quarterly, or yearly. And each will have its own package link. So this gives you opportunity to showcase inside your dashboard, multiple different payment options to clients, but it also gives you the ability to link different payment options directly on your website. So for example, if you want to only showcase the higher tiered options on your website, those can be the ones that are linked directly on your website. And then lower tier options could be ones that are just shown inside the dashboard after you have users sign up for your free trial. Now, working off that free trial, a lot of questions on, on the differences of free trial as well. So there's, there's essentially two different places and two different ways you can offer a free trial. The first is through this free trial settings right here in SAS Configurator. And this is going to be non-credit card required free trial. And basically what that means is a user will sign up, they'll go to app dot your domain dot com or whatever your custom white label domain is and they would see the sign up page and they would be able to create an account and when they do that they would enter in their name and their email and a password and then they would get access to your white labeled version and then this these are the settings in which they would see upon logging into your white label uh, domain into their sub account for the first time these are all customizable to to each of those folks basically so you can have the custom amount of AI agents the amount of credit that gets added to their sub account wallet balance characters, which is the amount of storage for the AI agent knowledge base, and then the amount of days that the uh, free trial will last. Now this is all optional and you can basically have it where the free trial will either end at a certain amount of days or by default when they run out of a balance because they'll need to add more funds to their sub account wallet um, and kind of vice versa. So everything here is, is positioned so that way you guys can create whatever type of free trial that you want. Now, alternatively, if you want people to be able to not have a free trial and not have any access to anything, you would just be able to set all these to zero, and then there's essentially no functionality that they would be that would, that they would be given. It would, it would gate their ability to use the platform. And in that scenario, we would want to offer them a free trial, but we want to be able to collect the credit card in exchange for that free trial. And that's where we go into editing a subscription package, and we go into the trial and credits section. Now. This is going to be the credit card required free trial where you can set the amount of days and or the amount of credit that the sub account would receive upon subscribing to this individual subscription package. And so this allows you to collect the credit card and offer an amount of days and the ability to offer credit depending on how you want to create your offers. So all of this is set up so that way you can create whatever kind of offer that you want based off of how you're structuring these subscriptions to your clients, basically. Any questions anybody has on stuff 
related to SaaS configurator free trials? I do, but not specifically necessarily about the free trials, but the subscription packages themselves. Yeah. Um, I had mentioned, and I don't know if I don't think it was last week, maybe the week before, that I want to do um, these chatbots as part of a package that has other things involved with it. And I would like to be able to assign um, subscription packages to someone behind the scenes, but not have them um, see that there is such a thing as a subscription package just within the Stammer world. Um, so they can't say, oh, the chat is just, you know, a $97 portion of the package that you're charging me, you know, a million dollars a month for. Uh, is there a way to toggle on and off the subscription packages so they don't see them, but they would still be assigned to whatever level subscription that I want them to be assigned to? So when they log into their sub account, for example, and they would go to, I'm just trying to understand, they would see, and if they click subscription, they would not see the subscription packages here. Or, or you know, some, something along the lines of, or they should, they could just be in the standard package, but see no no price associated no with it or something. And nothing then that would suggest to them that there was possibly an upgrade at this level, sort of at the, I'll call it for lack of a better term, the granular level. Um, so I can have it more at our overarching, you know, website level of some sort. So they wouldn't see these or they wouldn't see that there is an, any other package that they'd be able to go to. So one of the things that we're coming out with shortly is the ability to create multiple, oops, create multiple um, subscription packages, more than just three, and then be able to set the amount of subscription packages that you want to be shown inside the dashboard. So for example, there would be an option here, a toggle that would be like, show this subscription package to your sub accounts. And then if it was unchecked, it would just be empty. So they could be subscribed to one, but they would not even have it shown and it would not be shown. Correct. Okay, cool. That would work. Okay. And then just to quickly touch on the add-ons. So we're completing this view of section of stuff. So the add-ons is the additional functionality for your sub accounts and your clients. So if they were to want more storage that is outside of their existing subscription package, they could purchase more storage from you directly. And this purchase will be deducted directly from their sub account wallet balance. So that is all encapsulated into one place. And that also includes the AI agents. So if they were to want more AI agents, they could purchase more directly from you for whatever profit margin that you set. And if you're on the new full SaaS mode, your cost of this will be zero because you have unlimited included in your package. Cool. Any questions, comments, concerns on that? Quickly touch in the, some of the wallet stuff. So like I just mentioned, it is deducted from the wallet balance. The agency and the sub account both have their own individual wallet balances. The difference being the sub account is billed for usage at the price that you, the agency, has set. And all of that is back in, in the SaaS configurator where we were just where we just were. So in this scenario, we're saying that we're going to be charging our clients $10 a month for a million characters of storage. Alternatively, we could be charging 0.22 cents for each GPT-40 message. So this 0.22 cents would be deducted from the sub accounts wallet balance whereas only 0.2 cents would be deducted from the agency balance. And so essentially you're making a 10% profit margin on every single message that is sent. So the, the goal here is the sub account client will have to pay to add more balance to their sub account wallet. And that money, 100% of those funds will go directly to your agency as new income directly into your Stripe account. And then finally, if you need to add more balance to your own wallet, you can do so manually or you can do, do so through the auto billing section. And then this will be defaulted all to zero. So you have to make sure to update this manually and to ensure that you have auto rebilling enabled for. All right. Any questions on any, any of that or in general, we can just kind of open it up. General QA here. I have a general question. Yeah, please. If I'm training um, or if I plan on training off of someone's website and then whatever docs that I might, uh, the background um, of, you know, a really simple uh, incarnation of the thing. Is uh, chat GPT 3.5 good enough in that uh, realm or should I always opt for 4? And the reason why I ask is obviously the cost of using 4 is significantly higher than 3.5. But in my completely amateur world, it seems to me if it's just learning from docs and it's got this narrow little scope of what it's answering, it seems mm -hmm. to me that I'm not even more or less. It's not, again, as a non-expert, it's not really using the full power of chat GPT. It's just yeah. using, okay, I found this shit on somebody's website. Here's the answer. It's one of those things where you kind of have to test it for your sure. specific use case with your, your data. That being said, OpenAI has switched their default free model to GPT 4.0 now. Okay. 3.5 is no longer the, the, the free version that users would just use. It's 4.0. 
Okay. So to me, that's that's a signal that they're kind of depreciating 3.5. Okay. And All right. as we add Claude and some of these other models uh, here in the future, and I'm starting to hear some some new some new hints at some GPT-5 goodness called Strawberry and some other things. So we'll see how things progress here in the next couple of weeks. But we'll uh, we'll we'll make sure to keep keep you all updated. All right. Thank you, Harry. Good to see you. Hey, good to see you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. 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 Hey, um, quick question for you. I have a really complicated project that I'm still working on that one. And um, is there any way to hire someone on your staff for an hour or two to help me or something like this? It's just, just to get it right. It's so complicated. This is the, uh, the mulch, yep. I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, of course. Let's, let's, I'm sure you've connected with Drew already. I connected with Drew. He's been extremely helpful. I feel like we fix it. And then I try to add functionality that we're trying to add, and then I break it. And then, you know what I mean? You've probably been there. And then we try to try to calculate something, and it just gives me the quote content. Like, and I don't know if that means we're disconnected from um, the, you know, the API to to ChatGPT or something, but it like breaks. That right. it's like I have to. So yeah, I figured it would be so worth it to hire someone from your from on your staff for an hour or two or something just to like really help finish this out because it's we're almost there. But sure. Tim, yeah. Do you want to you want to link up with Harry here? Uh, yeah, we can take a look. Have you considered? So when the content thing happens, that means it's not usually it means it's not doing the function calling. So something in your prompt has broken the function calling. Um, and this is the this is the complexities. It, it requires advanced prompting skills in order to create a prompt that's going to not only get the LLM to do what it normally does, but also to make the LLM call more traditional code. Um, you have to understand programming and, and those kind of concepts. Have you considered? We'll take a look. We can take a brief look and maybe. Uh, you know, possibly hire someone on our team to do it, although we haven't really considered that model of engagement yet. Um, but have you considered how do you, how, finding a prompt engineer on something like Upwork or something like that? Uh, no, I, I haven't. I figured let me come back to you guys first to see what you recommend. And then we would go from there, whatever you, you know what I mean? I figured let me just go back to the source first. Yeah, it makes sense. And we're looking for a resource like that as well. So if you know anybody who's listening to this call or, or watching the video later on, if you know someone who is, uh, you know, has kind of some kind of programming background Background, or maybe they're just a great prompt engineer, we can teach them the Stammer platform. And then, you know, we would just, our vision is that we would let them engage with customers directly, right? Kind of like referrals and not necessarily bill under the Stammer brand. So if you know someone, feel free to shoot them my way, either Tim at Stammer.ai or on our Discord. And Harry, yeah, let's let's communicate and see how big of a project this is. Maybe pretty small and we can just get it fixed. Um, but if not, maybe we can engage some external resource or something. We'll figure it out. Do you need like a Python a person who does Python? Like, what do you? What are the requirements that you're looking for? It's hard. To, I mean, Python is the primary language we're using right now. That in JavaScript, but I just really someone who has a background in programming and understands how to call a function, um, and then also has experience with LLMs because that's kind of a new paradigm as well. So I'm it's, not sure. It's it's a weird it's a weird kind of paradox because it's like you have to know what to ask the AI in order to get relevant information back. Like if you were trying to get help with this so that's that's why it's kind of like this specific knowledge sphere of of stuff but the link i the link i sent you that that's for uh tim's calendar okay let's try to see if you guys can get that sorted out and if we can't get it sorted out in that in that first call then then we can do uh all right i'll throw something on right now appreciate it thanks for your help with that yeah yeah and this is something that over time is is going to get better just kind of from an entire market point of view, like as we, as a kind of moves to this function calling future, where a lot of the things that are done behind the scenes are are done with function calls that are having the AI essentially run code in the background. It's going to be important to have the context or I guess awareness of, of knowing how to deal with some of that stuff. Yeah, it's. I mean, most of this is working perfectly, like the way you guys have it on spec. I'm sort of breaking it. You know what I mean? Quite honestly, you can ask the questions, all your basic questions about the website, their business, it queries it perfectly. It does a really great job conversationally. The tone is excellent. They asked me to do some serious computations, right, to, to replace the calculation there. And it's doing it most of the time. So, but when it, you know, so whatever, we'll, we'll take it offline. But yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's also systematic of just the underlying OpenAI system. It 
itself, like running, like not using code interpreter, like how ChatGPT has it natively installed in its in its system where it can run a Python script that's doing math. Everybody else is still using the basic LLMs that are doing text prediction. So even though it's looking like it's doing those calculations, it's not actually doing the calculations. And I know that doesn't make any sense, but yeah. Thanks, appreciate it. One says, hi there, I saw on Discord that if you really need a special function, your site is able to help for the time being before the custom function is available. Can we provide the Python code? Is that possible? Uh, soon. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Give me the Python code. Uh, I'll take a look. We can we can see if we can figure that out. Yeah. Essentially, what Lim, what you'll be able to do is take that Python code, paste it in, and create a custom function inside st inside your Stammer AI agent, and then inside your prompt, you can train the AI agent to be like, okay, when X Y Z happens, call this function, paste in the name of the function that you made over here, and so that will allow the AI agent to run the function over here. And the future is that fun these functions that we and you guys can all create yourselves could be connected to any other platform and any other system out there that allows it to be connected to. So for example, somebody could make their own Shopify integration. And then the vision is you could add that to the marketplace, sell that to other agencies or other people. Like there's going to be a lot of functionality once once this kind of becomes more more built out. And that being said, Chat uh, OpenAI is still improving their version of this, which is creating custom GPTs in their custom action builder. They just recently added more functionality to be able to add to your to their action builder, which is how you create custom functions. So while they're improving their systems over here, we're we're, we're basically trying to just wait until they make it work enough for us to be able to implement it for you guys. What's the timeline for that? I mean, we're we're working on it right now with the scheduling and the leads. Those are two of the custom functions that we are trying to use to basically figure out how to implement custom functionality. So when we introduce custom functions as a feature itself, leads and scheduling will become the first two options as like the default templates or use cases of what scheduling or what custom functions can do. And so we're basically working on those right now to make them good enough to where they are able to be used as those templates. And OpenAI has something very similar where they're, they for example is a, like a get weather function so you could type in and it'll, it'll turn from like weathercom or something yeah and those those will be the that that's where things get real exciting because we'll we'll be we'll start to be able to make integrations with everybody's help essentially because if somebody has a client that needs a shopify integration we can use ai to build a custom function that will integrate with their shopify their shopify store to potentially pull uh inventory numbers and prices and availability and things like that um um, and that will all be able to be done by you as the agency with your client as a one-off integration connection without any other development needed. Yeah. And we do have a new custom, we do have, we have a new function coming out later this week that is going to be the bot notifying someone that a question is not, not known. The answer is not known. We just had to figure out the prompt for it because the prompt is a little strange. So we're working on that. Yeah. And that being said, once one of the big things that we're kind of waiting for OpenAI is once they release their code interpreter from beta with their API that will allow this additional functionality that we all experience firsthand in ChatGPT where we can upload documents and have it create graphs and all that other that that subset of functionality is is the code interpreter beta which is uh still in beta in their in their API so that's going to be a big one especially for for other things like document creation or other stuff like that any final questions here as always we have uh our discord is open team is uh active in there every day so if you guys have questions uh you can submit a ticket but also go into the discord because you can get faster help so to speak um if anybody doesn't have any questions i think we'll uh call it there thank you right on awesome thanks guys thanks talk to you, talk to you next you later, week Tim. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye.